All right, so we are inside Access. Access is where we're doing all of our archiving and all of our uh, restoring and deletions. So um, if I come over here, I'm gonna see all of our projects. Oops, there's our projects right there. So let's, we're gonna actually kill everything in January, 2016. But before we do that, we're gonna make sure everything's safe. So we're actually going into each of these other months that we've got stuff going on, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, and we're setting reservations. The way you set reservations is I click on something, right click on it, and then choose reservations. It pops up in a nice little reservation window. And I can come in and say, you know what, this is reserved until this date. So let's set a generic time of three months. One, two, three. And then we'll even do the end of that month, September 30th. And then, so right now, it's reserved until September uh, 30th, 2016, and then hit OK. And then he gets a nice, satisfying little red dot. So that's what we get. So in our little red dot, uh, it gives us the ability to uh, see that there's a reservation there. What a reservation does, it's kind of a safety to keep from deleting. So when I start deleting stuff from these other bins and projects, is if it was used in any of these other projects as well, it's safe. So I can go in and delete everything to do with this, and if it was used in this other project too, it skips it. So it, it since it's reserved, it's saying skip me. So that's how we how we deal with that. So next thing we're going to do is we want to delete all of the renders because renders are easily gotten, but but we need to get rid of them if we don't need them. So renders are an easy way to make space quickly on a system. So what we've done is we've done some save searches, but we're going to do it manually here. So let's see. So we're going to come in here, and I'm going to choose extended. And if I say the type is an effect, okay, and I'm actually going to hit a minus sign here and drop this particular selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the database folder I want manually. So I click here, and I say go into the projects folder go into January, and then hit OK. So that means specifically in January, show me all the types that are effects. And then I hit search. If I want to save that search, all I have to do is hit save. And then it will allow me to have these saved searches for future reference. So anything that's yellow, yellow is kind of a weird, uh, weird indicator. It doesn't really know if it's online or not. You would think, well, how does it not know? But it just doesn't know. So if I choose Update Status and Media Indexer, in theory, yellow should go away. Uh, it didn't go away here. So we're going to dig a little deeper. So I click on this object up here, or down here, and I look up at the top, and I see Object Inspector. And Object Inspector tells me everything about that file, including reservations. But yellow means, for some reason, it can't seem to find the rest of that file. So it's OK. When we, when we hit the deletion portion, it'll just go away. Red means these files are no longer in existence on the Avid storage. So if I come in and click on any of these objects, I see they're all red. Which it's good. Red is good. It means it's offline. We see blue. Blue means partially online. In other words, it's possible some portion of that video is still around. This happens really when we do, like, restores later on we're restoring a 30 minute piece of a one hour long service so some of it's here and some of it's not and that's really where blue comes in it's weird to have uh, blue as a uh, render but I'm okay with it finally green green is my favorite thing because it means everything's online and happy okay so theoretically if I was going to delete all my renders I would first of all hit command a so I'm going to select all and then I always, always, always update status from Media Indexer. It takes a minute, it takes a while. What it's going to do, I've already got an operation going on in the background right now, but what it'll do is it'll go through and it'll make sure that whatever its current color is, is legitimate. So it's going to ask the Media Indexer, which is keeping track of all of our video files for us, hey, are you in fact supposed to be online or offline? So it goes out and touches all these files. Once it's touched all the files and everything's done, I select it all again, Command A right click and hit delete and it brings up a great big deletion window and goes okay there are this many effects this many rendered effects and this many different resolutions of that effect so I've got some one-to-one -one material out here I've got one-to-one -one OMF which is old school I got DV25 I got MPEG 50 
So if I hit select all, it then shows me you're about to delete 15 gigs with the media. And I say, yep, hit OK. So when I hit OK, it deletes it. So it came up and it says, I deleted zero media files. Well, why is that? Well, we just did this deletion a minute ago, and it says there's 173 files reserved. In other words, we skipped them. Why? Because we reserved them properly over here. So even though those files are online inside this project, they're also online inside this project. So it, I, I can override the delete, but at this point, my reservations are keeping me safe. I didn't just delete a bunch of things people are using. It's a good day, right? Everybody, we got footage, we got footage deleted from the system because we deleted some stuff that's no longer here. And nobody lost any media. So as far as anybody knows, no deletions are going on because for the last three months, I've got reservations. So everybody's happy. So now at this point, we're going to go in and do some archiving. So I'm going to click on this guy. Instead of saying, give me the type is effect, I can say, give me type is sequence, right? And then hit search. And in a perfect world, I can actually whittle this down even more. If I went in and went, I know our sequences are always text that contain 06, or sorry, 0116, right? So that's, that should be in our name. And if I hit search on that, then all of our sequences that follow in that name should be the only thing I care about because these are just our daily sequences. Right? So some of these are blue. Blue means partially online. So if I right click on it and choose update status media indexer, it'll go green, presumably. So there are some greens down here. So what I would do is before I archive this, I select all and I choose update status media indexer and it updates it. So I just hit command A. So again, this is very similar to what we're doing before. Update status media indexer, except for I've already got a task going on in the background. So what it does, it goes and makes sure and checks each of these files to see if they're online. So let's dig deeper into this file here. So if, see where it says 016604 US daily. If I double click it, in my object inspector at the very top, I get all kinds of interesting information. I get properties, tells me all the metadata about the file. So all the, the sequence name and whatever, relatives. These are all the, all the bits it takes to put this together. So these are all of our different clips that we used. Associations. These are different projects that I've stolen stuff from. So I've got this bin that I've got footage in from one, one, system, one project to another. Frame locators. These are any locators somebody's used to make uh, information. Categories. This is how early on we started using things to keep things organized. And reservations. Right now there are no reservations on the stuff because we removed it. So if I go into relatives and I go, oh, here's a clip, here's CAD, capsule, whatever. I double click it, it then queues up that clip down here and it shows me the opposite of that. Now it shows me all the sequences this clip was used in. All the sequences it was used in. And I get a new button that says file locations. So if I click file locations, it shows me video and audio are online and it even shows me the drive they're on. So in the end, all this stuff is correlating back to itself. So if I go double click this, and it opens up my sequence once again, and I choose relatives, in theory, I can come into relatives and I'll find whatever blue indicators are partially online. So I see some red, reds are scary, but that's okay. Red means that some of this footage is not online. So if I sort based on color, so I'm gonna click on this column right here, and sort based on color, and then I should be able to see all the different colors I've got. So I've got some yellow, I've got some red, and I've got lots of green. So blue is just indicating I'm not completely 100% online. There's some things missing, right? So we've got some monthly whatever missing, we've got dissolves missing, not a big deal. I should still archive successfully. It's always a bit of a gamble with blue, but especially since this clip is offline, it may not successfully archive because that clip's offline, which is annoying. Why, why would the clip be offline? But if I wanted to archive this guy, now I can right click on this guy and choose archive. So when it archives, it comes up and these are archive profiles. We've predefined these. So I'm gonna come in and choose daily show archive 2016 and then hit okay. And this is a profile that's been pre-built. It brings open my window over here 
and these are different jobs that are currently running. Once it hits 1%, SGL is happy. So SGL is our archive server. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the top. And there we see that job popped in right here. It's at 0%. Right now there's a whole bunch of other jobs running. It won't, it, it won't uh, bump up in priority unless I want it to. So I can bump up in priority and say, you know what? Make this priority, and I always get these wrong. I think priority lower is what it should be. So that means in a minute, it'll pop up to the higher priority, and then we'll see him archive first before the next job does. And it never stops a job, because that would never make sense. But then it, once it's done archiving what it's working on, it'll then go, okay, who's next? And then it'll pop that one in. We can see these jobs archiving. Green is happy. Yellow is working on it, and gray is in process. It's no, it's not, it's in no states, kind of in a, in a state of purgatory. And then red means mad. So if something's red, I click on it, come down here, click details, and it tells me why it's mad. So I scroll down. Why are you mad? And it tells me down here, display name, null, blah, 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 archive manager, file, unknown source. In other words, I can't find my file. I don't know where it is. We may or may not get that when you try to archive a red sequence because the red sequence has material that's completely offline. In order for things to archive properly, you have to have media online, and then when it's archived 100%, then it moves over to our archive database. James, what does that mean? So if I open this guy up and I say, okay, here's my archive service. My job name is 1124CADTMF. So if I come over 